Hey everyone, so we just got done with our two live streams. Joe joined me, Joe from Bearded Hardware. He'll be linked below. And we did liquid nitrogen on just the 3900X for day one, and then liquid nitrogen on the 3900X and 5700K uh, XT for uh, 5700K for day two. So we're going to recap those for you and uh, get through some of the scoring, frequencies, stuff like that, and some of the mishaps along the way. Yeah, lots of those. <laughs> Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's new audio sound card, engineered by AudioNote. EVGA CEO knows high quality audio and has begun bringing sound cards back. The new audio sound card is capable of delivering hair raising audio superior to onboard sound. The card includes a line in, headphone, line out, and mic in, and a Sony Philips digital interface. New audio also leverages EVGA's PCB design experience, has upgradable op amps, and uses AKM premium components for its DAC and ADC. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so first of all, we had that other video that's pretty funny, actually, of the stream prep setup, where, yeah, that video. So that took hours. Uh, stream prep always takes hours, not just stream prep, but overclocking, because you're setting up for uh, not only like insulating everything, which doesn't take that long, but then yeah. also pre-testing. Yeah, it's more the base settings, and trying to get all the base settings. So, and I didn't really have much time to do it beforehand. So. Yeah, so we spent a long time on the pre-testing. Joe did all that stuff, and uh, unfortunately, the CPU and the motherboard both that we did the pre-testing on. We can get a shot of this, maybe. Unfortunately, the CPU and the motherboard casualties. Yes. Of war. Uh, <laughs> So that's the CPU. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's bent pins in there. And there's also missing pins in there. And Joe, do you want to explain this? Yeah, so we always use this uh, special cleaner all the time. You'll see it on my channel. And uh, yeah, so I was just cleaning, making it look pretty, like you know me, yeah. But uh, I ended up turning it over, and when I went to spray it, like this was a brand new can that, um, it's before we did it. It's high pressure. Ones, and it, yeah. uh, to be honest, like, I sprayed the whole top of it, like the, where the blue is now. Basically, just sprayed it, and the it was soaked. So when I turned around, I went like this. Basically, the CPU went flying about a foot that way and went to landed concrete. on the concrete, and basically, yeah, my heart sunk. Yeah, yeah. So we were supposed to only use Joe's motherboard and CPU. I pulled out one of each for mine, and the motherboard, your motherboard, died as well. I don't. You you were thinking that it's maybe because you were like fluctuating the temperatures so, a lot? So, yeah. Um, if you watch the stream, we talked about basically IF clocks and uh, yeah. temperature-wise and how it affects temperature when you go really cold. So I was testing that, but going all the way down to like minus 170, minus 180 degrees Celsius, then I would have to heat up to pretty much zero degrees and just the constant cold heat, cold heat. I probably did it maybe like 30-something times. Like we were... Yeah, doing it. It was, this wasn't during this. None of this was during the stream. No, no, no. This, this was all stream prep. So yeah. that was like just hours of nonstop heat cold stress. Yeah, it was a little rusty with the, the I haven't done some of the AMD stuff in a while. I've been concentrating on other things. So I wanted to make sure that mm. we had a proper stream on doing certain things. So yeah. And then the, the stream itself uh, actually went pretty well. So we did set up live during the stream, which was really yep. fun. Everyone got to see the Configuration, this board hadn't been tested for LN2 before. I nope. pulled it from my stock and did right. Vaseline. Virgin board. Yeah, all that stuff. And then the uh, the scoring wasn't too bad either. So for scoring, you ended up with the uh, CPUs at, let's see, 5.2 was the final frequency, 5.2 gigahertz. There might have been a 5.3 run in there, but it was, we I started having, was. yeah, we, we started having some weird cold issues. and. Uh, I didn't really want to risk your. I think it, I think you could do more, but oh, I was yeah. I was putting some pressure on Joe. Like we yeah. can't kill this chip. I need it for, for reviews and testing. He was very sensitive about it. Yeah, so we stopped at five two. I know that chip can do five three because I've done it, but it's not stable in everything when I've done it. Yeah. So it doesn't really count. But five two, uh, one point six volts for core, and then uh, f clock we had to bring down to fourteen sixty seven. Which yeah. anyone who's familiar with Ryzen, you're gonna know like wow, that's really low. Why'd you do that? So do you want to just one more? I know we explained in the stream like a hundred times, but one more. Yeah, time. I guess we definitely. Um, so we were trying to explain. Basically, I have the biggest bang for the buck on the Ryzen platform is benching the uh, or looking at the Infinity fabric and overclocking it properly. So you want to stay on a one to one relay, uh, ratio, 
And basically, we found a sweet spot of about 1,900 on F-Clock and 1,900 on MEM, which is technically 3,800 on MEM mm. because the way um, DDR works, double yeah. data rate, you just double it. So it's technically 1,900 is half of 3,800. Yeah, you're talking mega transfers so. per second versus megahertz too. But yeah, yeah. so that's the sweet spot. But unfortunately, with cold, it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it's great for any water or air users, and probably I would say dice too. But um, when you go to, when with liquid nitrogen, we you only get AMD really needs cores uh, or um, needs cold with the cores. Yes. So it doesn't really scale well. So you need to try to get like full pot temperatures. So you want to you need at least like minus 150, minus 160, and when you're doing the IF at at uh, 1900. Basically, it will only let you get to about minus 90. So by bumping it up, what it, what it pretty much killed the board probably last night was going and testing 1900, then dropping it down one divider, then trying to go cold again, and then yeah. doing it again and doing it. I basically did it like uh, too many times. So yeah. I think the board just didn't like it after a while. But. Yeah, so 1467 on that. And then the final score is just for, for reference. Again, we did Cinebench R15 and we did Times by CPU. And so the scoring, uh, R15 we didn't add till we got to 4.5 gigahertz. So 4.5, the score was 3521 for all core. And it, to get what that actually means, at 5.2 gigahertz, so an increase of 700 megahertz, it was 4031. And that's going to give you a percent increase of about 15%, uh, which is really not bad. Like, that's pretty damn good. Time spy CPU reflects the score less aggressively. So 12,580 was our score there. And that increased versus, let's say, uh, 4. Point, uh, let's do let's do 4.4. Yeah, do the one where we didn't, we just kept it, the F clock. Yeah, OK. So first of all, 5.2 versus 4.4, it was 5.3%, so a lot less than Cinebench. And then also uh, F clock, so you want to do Oh, yeah, I should mention that. So yeah. we did a test with F-Clock at 1900. That was the one you talked about. Yeah. Memory at 3800 megahertz. And uh, timing's the same for all of it. Frequency 4.0, just, just for bait. It didn't matter. It was just for comparison. Yeah. And uh, so that score was 12,015. Then all you did was drop down F-Clock to what it needs to be for the bench. Yeah. And it was qu quite amazing that <laughs> basically... We scored the same, so if we we dropped the F clock from 1900 to 1467, when we ran it at 1900, at 4 gig, it scored the same as the uh, F clock at 1467 at 4.5, I think? Yes, 4.5. So by gaining 500 yeah. megahertz was the, what it took to even out the, the IF clock. Yeah. That just shows right there that IF clock is the sweet spot right there. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just to, just think, if we could really get that IF clock with the temperatures and cold, man, AMD would be setting some records. Yeah, AMD would be in a really good spot. Yeah. So those were the, the settings. We ended up stopping at 5.2. It's better than my last live stream that I did without your help other than calling you in the middle. I stopped at 4.9, 5.0-ish, but basically 4.9. Uh, I've got I pushed that to five two five three separately for a different set of tests, but they weren't as abusive as these. So yeah. this is the highest frequency we've gotten on tests that are this abusive. Well, it's also chip dependent too. I it think. is chip dependent. Yeah. Board, it's a godlike board. Uh, Thirty nine hundred X. You've got Trident D Royals yep. that you said G you you basically custom bend. Yep. G skill. Uh, yeah, but you can get away with, since it's AMD. You could basically get away. These are would would be the equivalent of a forty eight hundred bin on G skill. Okay. So, it, like, if you want to try to get something at home, not like pre bit like the forty eight hundred is a really good series. Even the four thousand series for AMD would be awesome. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, and then a simple knock to a fan, just get the LN two vapors away. I think that I of course are AX sixteen hundred I, which is way overkill for what we're doing here. But yeah, AMD doesn't use that much power. No, seven nanometer. Yeah, yeah. So that's the stream. Uh, that gives you some frequency numbers idea of scaling. And the biggest takeaway here. If you're like, I don't care about any of this, I don't get it, why Alan 2 If you want to feel like you learned something, the biggest one is that Infinity Fabric frequency really matters. Oh my gosh, yeah. Because, again, to reiterate what Joe just said, but just to make sure it really sticks with people, going from 1900 megahertz F clock, everything else the same, and 3800 mem, uh, down to 1467, 2934 mem, is a drop in score from uh, 12,015 to 11,457, and then to regain that, you're at 4.5 core. Yep. And also, yeah, and also to reiterate, F-Clock we're dropping because you can't, you can't do it 
higher frequencies cold otherwise. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, out of box, if you want to learn something for home, you know, change the try getting Infinity Fabric to 1900 if you can. You're not going to see as big a gain as from 1467 to 1900, but if you can keep it in step with memory. Yeah, and get it to nineteen hundred. The trick is that one to one ra ratio. Yes, that's, that's where the the main performance is, and and uh, to be honest, I'm not totally sure if it it if it's a CPU issue or a board issue about the g trying to get nineteen hundred. So on this board, this pati these particular boards, the MSI X five seventy uh, Godlike, the uh, the Meg, basically every I guess I've tried two boards mm -hmm. and four CPUs and they've all done 1900. Okay. So what makes me think it's more of a board issue because I've heard some maybe on like a crosshair where in able they could only get like 1700 or okay. 1600 and, and I know the X5 might be just a buggy BIOS or something. 570 master we did okay. We mm -hmm. got 1900 but yeah, so that's yeah, the gigabyte the, board, right? Yeah, the gigabyte yeah, one. Cuz I, I actually saw High Cookie benching that and he was okay. able to get 1900 too. Yeah. So that's the stream. Otherwise, you missed out on uh, a lot of really good explanation. So because we did start to finish setup, there was a lot of talking about uh, not just like obviously stream interaction with chat, but we really did spend some time on explaining. Yeah, some of the BIOS settings, like what kind of, uh, and some of that stuff actually can go to other boards and stuff like and that. And you can apply it outside of LN2 scenarios. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Just knowing Definitely. Don't copy our numbers for non LN2. Like, that'll be bad, but... Yeah, think before you try to set. Yeah, but uh, at least you'll understand where Joe's doing stuff. So if you want to watch that part of the stream, the most probably useful part for you as a Ryzen owner would be right after we finished setup and right when you got into BIOS the first couple yep. times. So there's going to be a 30-minute period in there where Joe's going through every setting and explaining most of them while you're changing it. Yeah. And that'd be a good part to watch. So, yeah. Okay, so for day two, what we did was uh, you can see actually the Allen 2 pot the towel around it is completely soaked right now. Like it's, I mean, you could probably squeeze it and get water to come out of it. Yeah, it's a mess. So it didn't go as well even as the previous time I did this with a different version of more power tool. Yeah. Now I'm wondering if more power tool, the LNT version has issues or if it's something completely unrelated. Maybe the, we're just setting numbers that are not really supported that well. Yeah, I think uh, maybe it just requires a lot more testing, I think. Yeah. Um, I think because we were trying to set some values and then it would work sometimes and then it would, wouldn't work other times. Yeah, unfortunately, so. like half. So there was a really good period in there, right? At, sort of at the beginning when we got it working, did some runs. Yeah. That went pretty well. But as soon as we tried to push the voltage beyond like 1.4. Right. Yeah. Downhill from there. Yeah, and it just... Uh, Really kind of disappointing how the AMD card behaves with this stuff because I think, like you said, the really the way to solve this is hard modding. Yeah. And I've never in my life thought that hard modding would be the easier way to go about things. But I think if you, especially if you already know how to do it, yeah. it's way easier than dealing with that software. That's a lot of the times what we have to deal with because a lot of the vendors, even like NVIDIA, they always put blocks in there to kind of fight you off on the software uh, yeah. side and, anymore. Yeah. NVIDIA is not particularly friendly to Oh, well, they're really unfriendly, yeah. now. unfriendly now. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, AMD should hit that point and actually... Well, that's what I keep telling them, but they know. don't do it. They did the opposite, and they restricted the 5700 for product segmentation. Yeah, it seems like they're going so, back. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. And, and at a time when the community of overclockers were like the only people buying the Vega cards for a while when yeah. they were really expensive. But anyway, yeah, the... Unfortunately, like half of the overclocking process with that thing, like probably if you tallied up all the times we had to DDU and uninstall power play tables and reinstall yeah. power play tables, it was probably like an hour to an hour and a half of the stream was that. Yeah, basically uh, uninstalling. <laughs> it happens sometimes, man. That's overclocking. Yeah, so it, it takes a lot of patience. Um, the previous version seems to work a little better, but I don't know that it's, it's a, like an issue with the software as it was programmed. I think it's probably an issue with the software interacting with Andy's drivers, and I don't know that there's a fix, great fix for that. Oh, like, also, it could have been a driver too. We're using the same driver we were using. I've tried the newest one, and then I last time I had the most success well, was yeah. a month ago. So it's probably a slightly older driver. So yeah, maybe that could be that an could issue be too. Because I mean, that's just with drivers in general. Sometimes they fix things and break other things. Yeah, so you always have to make sure or intentionally block things. That's not that could be completely it crazy either. Yeah. Sometimes you got to go to an older driver because it's more accepting, I guess. Yeah. So. so anyway, 5.2 gigahertz on the CPU for day one. 
And then for the GPU, we were stuck at like 2450-ish megahertz, yep. which is around where I was last time. And the thing Joe was able to successfully do that I couldn't was get memory to 925. Yep. And that was by increasing memory voltage to about 1.4, 1.5, I think. Yeah, which we probably could explore a little bit further, but I, to be honest, we had so, too many issues that, that maybe that's something to do later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, at this point it's like, okay, well, this card's not cooperating, so yeah. we'll have to call it on this one. Yep. But for what it's worth, you did manage to uh, get one of the higher graphics, score, uh, the highest one out of the ones listed on Hardware Bot, which isn't saying much because some of those yeah. aren't really that impressive. And then um, mine was like 10687 previously. You were 105 something with the new driver and the new more yeah, power it was like tool. 10580 or something like which that. Which was a really good score compared to what we saw the whole rest of the time. Yeah, it's like a soon. <laughs> I guess it could be the luck of the stream too. Yeah. Sometimes uh, things just break right before. You know? Yeah, right. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll try and do more streams with overclocking stuff in short order. Hopefully, I don't know. Maybe next time we can do something with a power modded card. You can bring up a hard modded card. Yeah. And bypass well, all these. I gotta figure problems. them out too because yeah. it seems like there's there's a lot of issues. So. It's probably going to take a while to really go through and figure out the card. Yes. So yeah. I have one just for that method, so that's definitely going to be within the time frame or with yeah, within, sometime the next yeah next couple months or something. I don't know, maybe if, when the 3950 comes out or something. That'd be knows. a good time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so subscribe for more. You can subscribe to Joe at Bearded Hardware or click the link in the description. And thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.